Hey everybody, I'm Tim here with Eric Espinosa from Espinosa Cigars, and you're watching Cigars Daily. I want to invite you to get more out of this and all our videos now when you watch them on CigarsDailyPlus.com because we're always working to make it better on Cigars Daily Plus. And for this video, we just lit up the Espinosa 601 La Bamba. Saki bomb. The sake bomb. These sake. little these things are like powerful little fire bombs. That's why we did them. Hell yeah. Okay. You ever had a sake bomb? I this is my first this is the second sake bomb. Oh okay. real sake bomb. You mean the drink? Yeah. God, yes. It's powerful. It's it's a good way to get obliterated. Yes. Is that the idea? <laughs> of course. It's a quick way to get obliterated. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, you can try the 601 La Bamba Saki Bomb. You can find them on Cigars Daily. So today we're talking about Espinosa cigars. Because your brand, you've been on the market a while. You're not brand new, but you're definitely growing like a weed right now, right? It's a blessing, yeah. It's good. And I think people are getting to know the brand too if they're just getting into cigars. Because Espinosa is a name that will come up really, relatively quick in conversation. But what I want to do is a brand attack on Eric. This is a way for him to defend his brand from some admittedly important questions. I gotta, get, I gotta get some gloves. Get some gloves, man. We're going to duke it out, brother. <laughs> yeah, we're going to talk about your brand and exactly what you guys have to offer and what the hell makes you so special. So the way this works is I'm going to play the part of this concerned cigar connoisseur. Okay. And I'm going to ask you some pointed questions and you just answer however you everything is fair. Shoot. Sound good? I'm, I'm ready. All right, let's dive in. Got my gloves on. So the first thing I want to ask you about is Espinosa, the brand. And in like a lot of guys out there, you named a brand after your own last name which is admittedly a tremendous move of incredible humility on your part. But why why name it after your own family? What's the, I, what, why Espinosa, I guess? Because I can. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it's well, no, honest at least. Li listen, no, you know, it's uh, homage to my dad. Uh, mm. You know, I, 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 I tell everyone the same story. I, I hated cigars growing up because my dad's a Cuban guy, uh, you know, and, and some people tell you about their... Uh, you know, come over to my house and they're smoking them. My, I built a man cave in the back. You know, my dad, the whole house was his man cave, you know, and and uh, he was smoking in the dining room, in the living room, in the toilet. It didn't matter to him. And then growing up, you know, that smell would be everywhere. And then, um, you know, and then when I turned 15, I stole a couple of cigars and started smoking it. And, started, and I wouldn't be in the business without him, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so I laugh every time somebody tells me, you know, I, I come over to my house, I have a man cave, dude, the whole house with my dad's <laughs> man cave. I mean, you, know, and, um, you know, that's the last name that I carry, and, uh, um, you know, and it, it is a tribute to him, really. That's okay, reason. tribute to your family is fair. I get it. You, your dad was an important influence and got you into this stuff. It's fine. But what about you, though? What, what the hell makes you so special that you can blend cigars for the cigar-smoking world? There's a lot of palates out there, and you make stuff that's really, really, that's got pepper and spice and strength, and why the hell are people looking to you to blend their cigars? Because most people smoke cigars of people whom they like. Okay, so I'm out there in the social media, and uh, I think I'm sort of a funny guy, and I'm a fair guy, that I am. Uh, they call me Alpha Dog for what reason, I have no idea, <laughs> you know. But uh, people tend to smoke cigars of whom they like, and I'm no different. You know, I try, you know, my competitor cigars of who I like, who are friends of mine, and, and I spend my money with friends. And, you know, if you own the restaurant, whether it's good or bad, I'm going to hang out at your restaurant because you're my friend, and, and that's just the way it works. Uh, and they tell you that the uh, packaging, you know, uh, calls your attention one time, but if the cigar's not good, then they won't go back. Not that mm. we have the best package in the world, but we try to do things differently than everybody else. Um, and how do you get to... We've built our business on social media, so people get to know us more on social media. I can't get Tim that golfer, the golfer that, that smokes the uh, you, you know the well-known brands uh, uh, without mentioning any other brands. You know yeah, those yeah. guys I can't get to smoke yeah. my cigars, but I like to cook. And when you use good ingredients, you have a better chance of your meal coming out better. And cigars no different. What makes me a, a, a blender? My master blender? No, look, there's people that are master rollers. There's people that are master blenders. Well. I'm a masturbator, okay? I <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, but listen, no, all kidding aside, um, we're unique because I buy tobacco from everybody. I yeah. get along with everybody. Yeah, so yeah. I don't think there's two of our cigars that taste the same. And, and, and that's what we try to do. Am I a master blender? Absolutely not. I, 
And I'm going to go on record. I, I think there's no such thing as a master blender. Because in order for you to be a master blender, that means you've had to try and work with every single tobacco in the world. Now, you can be a master roller anywhere in the world. You can be in Bangladesh and Italy and, and Germany. It doesn't matter. And if you're a good roller, then you, you can be a good roller anywhere in the world. But as far as blending, you need to have mastered every single type of tobacco. And I don't think there's too many people who have done that. Now, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Of my knowledge, I don't think. Now, you, are there some people out there better than others? Absolutely. This is a huge point because I, the more I talk to to guys who do what you do, right, to cigar makers, uh, the more I'm hearing about this with the master blender title gets thrown around a lot. But there is a qualification for master blender that very few people meet these days. And it's one of the things, you know, in the cigar world, you know, cigar connoisseurs, we all get hoity-toity about what, what terms get used for what, like right. which terms are appropriate. Among cigar makers, that term master blender is a touchy one because truly not a lot of people qualify, right? I don't know of anybody. I mean, there's great guys that I'm not knocking anybody. I mean, there's great guys. You know, the Placentias have a lot of different types of tobacco. You yeah. know, the AJs, the Fuente, you know, um, but... I mean, have they worked with everything, you know? And, and that word master, I mean, you know, that that means that you mastered it. That means right. that there, there's no, nothing else it, to do. It's like a virtuoso Correct. in music, the, somebody the, who the, can play the, anything, the, right? And, and that's, once you master something, that's it. There's nothing else for you to, to yeah. learn. Yeah. And I don't think there's anybody out there that, that you know. Look, I, I bought some Jamaican tobacco about five, six years ago. I did one called Reggae and Dread. And I don't think too many people have had Jamaican tobacco. Not uh, a lot, not today. Right, right. and, and yeah. uh, well, I stopped making it because I couldn't get it anymore. And by the way, it was horrible. Uh, <laughs> I, I go on record and say that <laughs> tobacco, tobacco suck balls. But anyway, um, and that's just my opinion. And I mean, no disrespect to him because there's a lot of great people out there that, that, that exact know what they're doing. Yeah. But are they masters at, at, at it? Uh, I mean, I, I don't know. All right, well, that's fair. And I'm definitely not one of them. That's fair. Before before we get away, I'm here to slam your brand, though. Okay. So I, mean, I got one more big question for you. Okay. When it comes to Espinosa cigars, you say that you named it after your dad. There's good heritage there. You talk about the, the tobacco you put into it and, and your experience in it, which is good. But why the hell should someone get an Espinosa cigar off the shelf versus something that's been around forever? These brands like your Padrones, your Fuentes you mentioned, your Olivas, stuff that people have heard of already and know. Why should they go after an Espinosa cigar? There's so much out there to try today. Because they're gonna get to know who we are in cigars daily. You understand? <laughs> you know. That's a good sh answer to that sh question. Sh <laughs> shows, shows like these are what make people want to, you know, um, try my brand. I can promise everybody out there that um, I'm not telling we have the best cigars in the world because I'm not that guy. But we do put a lot of emphasis on, on buying good tobacco. And again, like I said earlier, when you buy good quality tobacco, you have a better chance of your cigar coming out better. And and. And we have a passion for it. I, I don't like to do garbage. Uh, um, we ran out of that. Our number one selling cigar was the Laurence, the, yes. the, which was a, yes. a, a Brazilian Habano wrapper. We ran out of that wrapper because COVID, they didn't grow it in Brazil. It was grown in Brazil. We ran out of that wrapper. We haven't had that cigar. I got millions of back order in that, and we haven't been able to, to, to make the cigar. So um, everyone out there has been telling me, dude, if you get an Ecuadorian Habano, it'll be the same. And... Uh, I don't do garbage. Neither does my son, and we, and, you know, and my team. I, I don't want to lie to consumers and tell them, okay, it's the same thing. When it's not, so I finally I bought a container worth uh, a month and a half ago. So in a couple months, we're going to see it again. But we didn't do it. Good. And, and, and we're not just because of the money. We, you know, chase the money and and lie to consumers. We don't do those things. Man. It's one I, thing. I it's one thing Jim lie. teaches me here. He talks about you do the right things. You don't focus on the money. You do the right things, and money will follow. That, absolutely. And and it's huge in the cigar world. The idea that you can just switch a leaf and people won't notice. Absolutely. And and truly, there are brands with integrity that won't do it. And I think over time, those brands tell who they are just with the consistency and quality. Listen, we we had a brand, the, the Especial, uh, that we came out with it and. And there's something called the Honduran effect. Uh, most people that are in this industry know what that is. If you guys out there don't know what it is, it's when you when you're blending cigars, you do it in Nicaragua, you do it in the in the country where you have your factory. But when you try them there, they taste different than, than what they do in the states. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, I and I've tried it. I I made the same roller, same tobacco, same everything. I smoked one in the airport in Nicaragua, and when I landed in Miami, I picked up my car, I drove home, and the cigar tasted different. Uh -huh. Why? They tell you it's the plane ride. They tell you, I don't know what it is. And a lot, no, I don't think anyone in the industry can answer that question because I've yeah. asked a lot of people and, and, and I've never gotten a, a straight answer on that. 
So with that, those cigars, we blended it, we brought it to the stage, because what you do is you bring it to the stage, you let them sit, you, you try it after a while, and it's good, and that's what you roll with. Yeah. And, and we did that, but when it got in, it wasn't the same. And we, we you know, we 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 had a, a, a little shipment, and we sent it out, and then the other ones that came behind it weren't good, and we didn't send it out. And everyone said, when are you going to come out without a special? Until it's not ready, we won't do it. Well, as I come at your brand with, you know, the questions, a thing I want to bring up to you guys who are watching is at Cigars Daily, we've enjoyed working with Espinosa in a big way. And actually for three reasons. There's, you know, with a lot of brands, you talk about flavor and consistency. And with Espinosa, there's a third piece of this for me. It's a commitment to excellence. It's you. It's, it's your it's bald head. It's, 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 it's a commitment to excellence from you, though. You have a commitment to doing it right in the right way. And we've seen that consistently from Espinosa. So if you haven't tried Espinosa cigars and you're good with a cigar with some power, I suggest checking those out. You can find them on CigarsDaily.com. And I want to encourage you again, check this video out on CigarsDailyPlus.com because we're always working to make it better on Cigars Daily Plus. Thanks for letting me slam your brand, brother. No problem, bro. I appreciate it. I'm, I take anything. I'm, oh, yeah. I'm a big boy. Sweet. So. Well, this is Tim and Eric. We're both signing off for Cigars Daily. I'll see you all in the comments.